Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to render complex vegetation in SketchUp with Fluid Ray. Rendering vegetation, such as trees, bushes and grass requires many highly complex models. This will easily result in heavy scenes that slow down the SketchUp workflow significantly. With Fluid Ray SketchUp instancing, it's possible to render very complex models while keeping the SketchUp scene lightweight. All our high-resolution models are saved into separate files on disk. In SketchUp, we use some simplified proxy geometry, such as a cube or a plane, to set the location of the high-resolution model. In the component definition name of the cube we use a special fluid ray keyword to reference to the file containing the high-resolution model. When importing the model in fluid ray, the keyword will be recognized in the component definition name, and fluid ray will substitute the low-resolution proxy with the high-resolution model on the fly. Let me show you in detail how it works. First I'm going to prepare some high-resolution models to be used later. Let's go to the 3D warehouse and look for some suitable models. First we look for a patch of grass to be duplicated many times to cover the surface surrounding the house. I'm going to choose a pretty detailed model, where each leaf of grass is modeled with polygons. Let's download the file into an empty SketchUp scene. Let's place the model so that it's centered with respect to the axis origin. This is important if we want the grass to be placed in the expected location later, when we'll duplicate it around the final scene. As we can see from the outliner, the downloaded model is subdivided in many subcomponents. For performance reasons, it's always better to have a model made of just one unique mesh. Let's convert the model into a unique mesh. Double click on the model, select all the subcomponents, then go to the edit menu and select explode. Repeat this operation multiple times until all that's left are polygonal faces. Now we have converted the model into a unique mesh. You can also see this from the outliner, there are no subcomponents in the model. Let's save the model and name it grasspatch.skp. We'll need this name later when referencing it from our main SketchUp file. Here we repeated the previous steps for this bush model. In this case we'll save it as bush.skp. Let's create the proxy geometry for the grass patch. This geometry will be automatically substituted with the high-resolution model when importing in Fluid Ray. The size of the grass patch was around 0.6 meters. Let's create a plane of a similar size. This will make the placement process easier. Double-click to select all elements of the plane, then create a component with the selected geometry. Now the important part, the name of the component definition should be fluid ray dash ref, open parentheses, then the name of the file containing the high resolution model, in this case grasspatch.skp, then close parentheses. The file name entered here is relative to the location of the main SketchUp file containing the house. Since we have the main SketchUp file and the grasspatch.skp in the same directory, the file name entered in the component definition name is simply grasspatch.skp. But, for instance, if the model for the grass patch was in a subfolder named models, the file name entered in the component definition would have been models slash grasspatch.skp. Here we use the standard SketchUp tools to duplicate the proxy geometry around the scene, until we have all the surface covered with grass patches.
Let's save the SketchUp scene and import it in Fluid Ray. I'm going to select a point of view that clearly shows the grass geometry. Let's widen the field of view of the camera and drag and drop in nice environment so we have some lighting. As the rendering progresses, you can clearly see how the proxy planes have been substituted by the high-resolution model containing the leaves of grass. Now we repeat the previous steps for the bush model. In this case, the component definition name will be fluid ray dash ref, open parentheses, then bush.skp, then close parentheses. Let's duplicate the bush proxy geometry around the scene a few times. Let's save and re-import into Fluid Ray. This time we should also have bushes. I'm going to increase the resolution, so we can better see the details of the imported geometry. The bushes are a bit too small, let's increase the size. We can do it in two ways, we can either rescale the proxy planes in the main SketchUp file, or open the high resolution model and rescale that. I'm going to take the second approach, since the first would require rescaling all the planes that we placed around the scene.
Let's save the bush file and re-import in fluid ray. Nice. This looks much better. Now we just have to wait for the rendering process to complete. As you can see, the final scene is composed of millions of polygons. It would be impossible to create such a scene directly inside SketchUp. But thanks to Fluid Ray instancing, we can render such a scene without any problem, while keeping the SketchUp scene lightweight. Thank you for watching this tutorial on how to render complex vegetation in SketchUp with Fluid Ray.